not admit it without parents or guardian. the beach naked it's my business you know oh hi welcome to an asylum dull feature and we hope you are having a great evening we are here to watch some fantastic films and i'm bill that's sam panico from bns about movies and tonight we have jen upton hello jen cheers hey guys glad to see you missed you hello can you hear me Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we can okay. hear you. Right. Hello, everybody in the chat. Hello, Bill. Hello, Jen. Yep. It's still light out. We're going to just, as the sun comes down, get ready for the drive-in to start here. And we've got two fantastic canine hmm. classics. <laughs> yeah. There's a daring dog <laughs> do here. Uh, and, uh, dog do? You, well, not do do, but this <laughs> dog do. Daring do. Anyway, I'm super not. excited for two dog movies, starting with uh, Dracula's dog, a.k.a. Zoltan Hound of Dracula. And uh, I'm excited because I know Jen loves both these movies. It seems like a lot of people were excited about them when we announced them, too. So let's uh, let's dish on dogs. Mm, Jen, I am I was... absolutely transfixed by your starry ceiling. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I thought I'd, after last week's zombie, I thought I'd up my game. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so about these two movies, yeah, I probably won't stick around for the second one because it's really late here, but I love them both. Um, and I did not know there he is. There's our little demon dog. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Hey, Cubster. Devil dog. Cheers, you. Cheers to my British friend. Hello. <laughs> Love you across the pond. <laughs> He's so handsome. <laughs> he has real vampire teeth. They stick yeah, out of his neck. Like yeah. 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 Zoltan got him. Yeah. Speaking of the teeth, I when I was looking this movie up, I did not know. I thought just from watching it that maybe they put rubber bands to get the dogs to kind of raise their lip. But it turns out, if you have the picture handy, Bill, Stan Winston did oh. the dental appliances for the dogs oh, in this wow. movie. Um, and I found, I just thought that was awesome. I was like, <laughs> they actually put dental appliances on these dogs. I thought, how did that even, how do you get the dog to sit still for that? Like, I just, <laughs> If someone has to brush his dog's teeth every day, I got to tell you, dogs don't like you doing that. Much less no. putting down. I couldn't even imagine how dangerous it would be to put a dental appliance into Cubby's mouth. Yeah, yeah. Let alone a Doberman and you know, German Shepherd and all the other dogs that are in this film. Um, but they here's what I found. It said, um, oh, "Here's your dentures, by the way." Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. And in that picture too, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it almost looks like they put contact lenses in the dog's eyes, unless that's the puppet. Oh. Because oh. there is a puppet head in a few shots. So, but that if that's a puppet, that's fantastic. I mean, it's it's just great. Um, apparently, Stan Winston studied dentistry in college before switching to fine art and drama. So <laughs> he was really good at this. And the dog, um, this dog, there were there were a whole bunch of dogs. In another movie called The Doberman Gang. Um, I don't know if you've got, have you guys seen that? Uh, it's actually written by the same writer as this movie. Yes. And yeah. I just found that today, looking up stuff about this trainer. Um, 
and it looks like there were six dogs wearing saddlebags and spiked collars that rob banks. Yeah. So I and it has a theme song where they're singing about the dogs stealing money, and so now I'm I'm obsessed and I need to see this movie. Oh man. Um, it just sounds because the dogs are so well trained, and I'm pretty and they're sure they're all Zoltan, named after gangsters too. There's like Dillinger, Bonnie, Pretty Boy yeah. Floyd. Yeah, they're they're literally a gang of of gangster dogs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Zoltan is in that movie because he does the same trick where he runs, he backs <laughs> up and like runs and jumps over the fence. That really great. This these dogs in this movie do great tricks. These are really well trained dogs. In this that movie. happens in Dario Argento's Phenomena or Tenebre. Tenebre, but it can't be the same dog, right? They wouldn't have flown him to Italy, would they? No, that one's a lot smaller, I think. Yeah, yeah, because it's just an amazing trick. Um, but it's the same basic trick. But Zoltan does all kinds of cool stuff in this movie. You know, lots of hitting his mark and doing, you know, taking his cues, and and he's great. He's just great. That's the trainer. Um, his name was Carl Lewis Miller. And he was born in Utica, New York, which is not far from where I was born. Um, he did the dog chase scene in Raising Arizona. He trained Harry in Amityville Horror. All the uh, the cat in Stephen King's Cat's Eyes. Um, and Cujo. <laughs> Yeah, and all, oh man, I love that cat, yeah. And yeah. Um, Cujo, all the animals in Babe, and Babe, Pig in the City, which is like, includes the ducks. Apparently he trained, even trained the ducks. Um, and all the Beethoven movies, and the controversial film White Dog. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah, so he's pretty awesome. Um, there is a shot of the dog from White Dog in a clip from Doberman Gang. Oh, wow. So he must have had like, there she is. There's Vivi. <laughs> She's looking a little ghoulish around the eyes tonight. So With I wonder if Zoltan cut. got her too. <laughs> oh, and another good thing I found that I, I was thinking about it before I looked it up. The two German, there's two German shepherds in Dracula's dog. They are the same two dogs that played Beauty and Beast in The Hills Have Eyes. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was stoked about that. I was like, these are awesome dogs. Like, they're the hero. The one dog is the hero of the Hills Have Eyes. So it's Becca found out this week that the dog, uh, Darla, who was in, um, she's the dog who was precious in Silence of the Lambs, was yeah. also the pink poodle in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. She's the dog in The Burbs. And uh, she's also the dog in uh, Batman Returns. So she's like, it's another one. I guess when these dogs get trained, that well, they just appear in so many movies, you know. I always wondered about the dog in the Elvira movie. Oh yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's Darla. Uh, Dar Darla was also in um, co the show Coach and the show Erie, Indiana. So she had has six roles listed. But uh, yeah, she's. Uh, it's amazing to be in in both the Burbs and Silence of the Lambs. That's like a, a great double. Uh, that is awesome. Everybody knows precious. She's like her pictures are always out there you know yeah she's the best yeah yeah i mean you know yeah i wonder if she knew he was evil i i think she was just like you know what he does feed me so i guess he's all mm. right <laughs> you can stay in his nice. house when you're in pittsburgh it, it's right near our house they have the uh bed oh. and breakfast in there now and they even have a little room where you can put your dog up above and cubby can be up above <laughs> and i can That's be yelling, cubby, please save us. <laughs> Oh, so do one of you guys want to talk? You guys have shown a couple of Michael Pataki films before. Yeah. Yeah, including um, the other one where he played a vampire, which is the first one that comes to mind, Grave of the Vampire. Great movie. One of my yeah. favorites. Mine too. Yeah. And uh, the same writer as this wrote Pataki's uh, Mansion of the Doomed and Cinderella, the uh, two movies that Pataki directed. Yeah. So they, they had a, a lot of stuff they did together. Yep. Uh, and fairy tales, which is fairy tales and Cinderella are essentially the same movie, but yeah, uh, yeah. He didn't direct very many movies, but he he probably should have. Yeah, did he? I actually really the... like Mansion of the Doomed a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Mansion of the Doomed, especially Gloria Graham. 
What a yes. performance Michael Pataki got out of Gloria Graham in Mansion yeah. of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. She was violent, uh, was, wasn't she? In um, It's a Wonderful Life? Yes. Violet yeah. Bick. Right. <laughs> it's all over town. You've been giving money to Violet Bick. <laughs> I right, love at right. the end where he sees her like getting pulled out of the Dima dance and he, she, he's like, that's Violet Beck. I know that girl. Yeah. I think everybody knew Violet. I told you about the crazy cut of that we watched, didn't I? No. Because there's a Tubi cut that is the abridged edition of It's a Wonderful Life that literally stops when he jumps off the bridge and goes from there to the ending. It totally removes all the fan fantasy stuff. Like, did like some Christian fundamentalist demand this cut where they're like, we don't want any of the stuff where the angel shows him what his life should be like. And it literally fast forwards at the end where everything's okay. And you're like, what, what just happened? Yeah. That doesn't uh, make sense. Yeah. Who is this for? <laughs> what, why? Is what was the for? drama of the movie then? Yeah. What was the point? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Frank Ray uh, Pirelli, who uh, wrote this also wrote end of the world and laser blast. Uh, as well as uh, he's a co-writer with John Sales of Alligator, so uh, yes. he did a lot of stuff, and he also co-produced this movie with uh, Albert Band, who produced Full Moon by producing the people that are Full Moon, <laughs> the, the yeah. father of uh, Richard Band. Yep. Oh, there's Reggie. Yeah. And you've shown a couple of his films too, right? Mark of the Devil. Did you guys show that? You did, and uh, he was also in Salem's Lot. Yes, he's Mr. Barlow, yeah. And then the um Poor the porno too. version Dracula Sucks. <laughs> Dracula Sucks. Which he's I know what the still is from. Uh, he plays yeah. Van Oh, that's still that's from Dracula Sucks. This is him playing Van Helsing, so I'm sure he doesn't get in on it, but <laughs> you never know. <laughs> he was Austrian, so <laughs> um I don't remember seeing him in anything else, really. I think he had a small part in one of the Star Trek episodes, the original yeah. series. Um, but I mostly remember him from Mark of the Devil. If you read any of the behind-the-scenes stuff about Salem's Lot, he really had a difficult time wearing that makeup. And it, it, it took forever to shoot the movie because every time he would like move his face, the makeup would crack or something. So mm. it was, and plus he had those contact lenses. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't probably wasn't an easy performance, but he didn't really, you know, he didn't have any lines. <laughs> he doesn't really have that many lines in this film. He just, it's all voiceover. Yeah, it, they did it in ATR. Can you imagine filming that? Do you think somebody was there reading the dialogue so he could react to it? <laughs> well, I was thinking a good drinking game would be how every time he says Zoltan, because he says it like a lot. <laughs> That's pretty much all he says. <laughs> you know what he again. is in? Do he is in and he doesn't get any credit for it. He's the the yellow jacketed killer in the bird with the crystal plumage. Mm -hmm. He's not listed in the credits for that. And, yeah. Uh, he's also in the dead. Don't die. The Curtis Harrington movie. And uh, one of my favorite uh, Andy Sedaris movies, seven. He's in that. He's the hermit in seven. Uh, I've, never, I've not Picasso. seen that. It's the original Picasso trigger. It was remade as Picasso trigger. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, I did find, you know what my, I think, it didn't used to be my favorite Michael Pataki movie was always Grave of the Vampire until I saw Dream No Evil. Ah, on the arrow, I think it was the arrow set. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I watched it twice. I just thought it's one that of was these such a great there. movie. Oh, I guess that's what that picture that's what that still from. is from because he's yeah. not a bad guy, and the whole movie is just really bizarre, but yeah, kind of well acted and and. I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was that whole, cool. that's awesome because it has Dark August on it too, which I know Bill likes a lot. I love Dark August. Yeah, yeah. that's a great film. And in, um, Pataki also had that small part in Happy Days where he was in the um, <laughs> what do you call it, the Derby with um with Fonzie. Oh wow! There. Yeah, so he was the bad guy, of course. So, what's <laughs> your favorite Pataki movie? Can I guess? Well, you know I'm going to have to say The Baby. Yeah. <laughs> he has a very small part in The Baby, but he yeah. is in The Baby. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where he's just what? sitting on the steps burning himself. <laughs> well, he's also in The Bat People, 
Yeah. So it's hard yeah, for me to sheriff. choose a favorite. I, I, I mean, the baby's way better than the bad people, I have to admit. But Becca said her favorite Michael Pataki movie is Halloween 4 because he shows up to run yeah. Miss Grove in it. And uh, mm -hmm. I yelled the first time I saw it, holy shit, Michael Pataki's in this. And like, I was the only <laughs> yeah. person that cared. He's also born really close to Pittsburgh. I think he's from Youngstown. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Oh, and he was on WKRP as the Russian guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's literally that guy. He's in everything. <laughs> I think it said. Becky just had quoted a, a Michael Pataki line from Halloween Four as she popped in and out of the room as she heard his name. She said, "If Loomis is Loomis read memos, he'd be here right now." That's what he says in his first appearance. <laughs> I'm kind of on the fence whether or not he's hot. Mm. Michael Pataki? Yeah. Oh yeah, I think he I, is. I, I kind of think he is, but for me, from that era, it's Andrew Prine all day, every day. So. I kind I just, of I don't know why I put them in the same category. <laughs> Andrew Prine, I just the, we just saw the trailer for the Eliminators, and Becca said, "Is this a real movie?" And I said, "Yeah, it's awesome." And Andrew Prine's in it, and he's really good in it, and it has a mandroid. <laughs> and it's such a good movie. Well, by good, I mean it's he's got that seventies sex appeal. He looks like a lot of the guys that were in Joe Gage's porn films. Like yeah. honestly, like he's very indicative of that type that that did a lot of those movies, and I'm not saying he did, yeah, uh, or that you he guys would've... know that he was a nude model, right? Yeah, yes. Have you seen the photos? I no, I'm not. I know he also Look him up. supposedly <laughs> liked to be filmed nude a lot. Like he was really into nudes. But... Yeah, was, there was a reason. He was <laughs> yeah. not shy. Yeah, yeah. Even when I mean, I always felt like. Not we're going off on a tangent, but he was a much better actor than he was ever given credit for. I always yeah. thought. Yeah. Simon King Agreed. of the Witches, you guys showed that's a great movie. You know, yeah, I, I love can't that movie. I can't imagine anyone else playing that part. Like you know. Um, what else have I got here? I did find something that I thought was kind of interesting about Reggie Nalder. He called out Bill Cosby like many, many years before anybody oh, wow. else um, oh wow i don't know when they worked together it was apparently on a tv show uh quote i hated working with bill cosby he is a pig i first met him in rome where i did an episode oh it was i spy okay bill cosby is rude arrogant and very untalented whoa yeah <laughs> <laughs> Untalented. Like, well, this background is wonderful. Right? This is amazing. That is gorgeous. Andy Moyer did this background. So thanks, Andy. We love Thank it. Mm -hmm. uh, the only fact that I had beyond this, well, I have two facts. One is that uh, there's two Star Trek original season, uh, original series actors in this. Arlene Martell was in a mock time, which is oh. be the best episode. Yeah. And uh, Jan Shatan was in Lights of Zetar. So uh, there, there is some crossover with that. The other thing that I always laugh about this movie is so much of the movie is about uh, uh, Reggie Nadler's character, whose name is Vite Smith. Not Smith, just Smith. Uh, mm -hmm. that he believes that uh, Michael Pataki's character is the last descendant of Dracula, and he keeps going on and on about how he's the last descendant of Dracula. He has two kids. So, like, wouldn't the kids be the last descendants of Dracula? That's a good point. It's like yeah. it comes up like more than five times in this movie. So I kind of thought that's the first time I saw this, that's how it was going to end with the kids. Yeah. And it didn't go there. Um, and I also kind of felt like the, the movie should have been called Renfield's Dog because that's mm -hmm. more correct. <laughs> yeah. 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 But Dracula's Dog sounds like when you hear that, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm there. You know what I mean? It's like, that's a good title. Better. Yeah. Than, well, Tan Hound and Dracula is is good but dracula's dog just it's short and sweet and you're like yeah I'm, I'm here for it do you guys have the kino lorber version of this i do not i don't, I don't either. either no but apparently there is a, a, a really informative audio commentary on that that's and i don't work for them but there's a sale going on right now at kino lorber and everything's about half off and the yeah. shipping is like all one rate so if not to you, Jen. Sorry, I'd probably be more. No, I, yeah, I know. Yeah. And I have to pay VAT too. So, yeah. But uh, there's a lot of good stuff, a lot of Canon stuff for like five bucks. So, mm. like Maria's Lovers is like four bucks. 
shot in Washington. They were right outside my house, actually. Not outside my house, but towns around my house. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, uh, so cool stuff. That's cool. And Jen. Oh, oh. yes. Uh oh, <laughs> yes. Can this we is can we soon. talk about your book? Yeah, it's almost. It's just about. I'm. I've got a couple of little things left. Um, the cover is being tweaked, and I'm waiting for a couple of quotes, promotional quotes, and then you'll be able to buy it probably within six weeks. So yeah, I'm stoked, stoked. How long has this book been in the making? Uh, well, it's really small. I'm not gonna lie. It's only 107 pages. <laughs> um, but. A lot of the material that's in there is, is older stuff that's been tweaked or cut or redone or repurposed and kind of melded with other pieces that I had written for other websites. And it's kind of, it's been a while. I mean, really, really working on it like heartily for about six months just to kind of get it all pretty and nice and do the layout and, you know, design the cover and all that. So... What do you think of the cover? I like it. I like it. I had a different one, and then I just thought it didn't pop. So I did that one, and then I've been kind of getting feedback from different people, and some people love it, and other people are like, well, what does it mean? And I think <laughs> you have to kind of be the right people to know what it means. <laughs> so. what, what does it mean? Yeah, like they don't understand the ring, the red ring. Mm-hmm. So it's like you kind of have to be the right kind of people <laughs> to know. I bet but, they said it looked like someone put a drink down on your book. Yeah, they didn't. <laughs> yeah, they don't understand. They're like, is it everything? And they're like, what does that mean? And I'm like, okay, no, it's not for you. It's just yeah. a very short, it's a short guide of my sort of favorite movies from <clears throat> right around the early 90s to the early 2000s. So it's about a 10 year period. Um, and there's a bunch of reviews, some of which are on BNS. They're just a little bit different now. Um, and then there's three or four kind of in-depth kind of, I don't want to say heady, but heady is probably the right word. They're pretty, pretty hardcore interpretive essays. So like I compare the novel Ringu to the film and, you know, do semiotics and all this other stuff. So it's, you know. It's for film nerds and for people who kind of are curious about Japanese films and maybe you're like unsure where to start. So, yeah, it's, it's more or less um, just I just wanted to get it out there and have um, have it have something in my name that's that's not ghost written for a change. So it'll be good. And then um, next after that, I'm going to start doing a layout for the cocktail book. Don't know. You know that'll be cool, Ooh. and I got a couple. Yeah, I got I got a couple other things that I'm working on that are just like for clients. But yeah, there'll be an ebook version and there'll be a print version. So thank you for letting me pimp. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> then also, a couple the right reviews place. up on the site on my site this week. She did a bunch of Jackie Chan movies because uh, Jackie that was, that was fun. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you saw Gorgeous. I think that movie is awesome. Like it's everybody kind of is like, yeah, it's okay. I'm like, I loved it. I thought it was yeah. really, really good. Yeah, yeah. I, I I was in Hong Kong. Like just I just got a really cheap flight, and I was like really into Hong Kong movies at that time. It's like I want to go to Hong Kong for Chinese New Year, so I went, and I was like, let's play it at the movie theater, and it was gorgeous. And Jackie Chan's movie was. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Kyle. No, it's okay. And it was in. It was subtitled in English. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go see that. <laughs> you know, it was fun. That jacket fight seems amazing where he keeps taking off the white jacket and getting in and out of it. It's like some of the John Wick movies use some of the choreography, similar choreography as that. And, uh, but mm. it's just so effortless, like his scenes in that movie. It's, and it's a great romantic comedy too. It's like, wow, I can't, it's a totally different Jackie Chan movie. Yeah, totally. Super yeah, Cop yeah. was Jackie Chan, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw that theatrically when, yeah. when it when it came out. I went to see that, and I, I don't know why because it's totally Miramax not the, put all those out in the U.S. Yep, in the nineties. Yeah, that's yeah, one where I he slides down the uh, glass with his hands, and all the light bulbs are like popping. You're like, wow, that's a absolutely insane stunt. There were some great 
stunts on top of a train. Yeah. There was like a motorcycle on top of, on top of a train, and I was like, "Holy shit!" I was pissing my pants in the theater. Oh, that was and Michelle Yeoh's stunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah. She, I guess I had never seen um, a movie where a woman fought like that in in one of the in you know a martial arts film. Yeah. There were many before that, I understand, but yeah. that happened yeah. to be the first time I saw it. Well, she's amazing in that because she literally had the mindset that she wasn't she was going to do everything that jackie jan could do in that movie and it definitely and she did it. it's it, she did it yeah it's wild and now she's a major actress in the u.s you know what i mean not that she has been but she's you know she's done dramatic movies here and you know and in, in an oscar winning movie mm, yeah i know i know i haven't seen that yet i need to see that we um, just bought it and haven't watched it yet so i'm excited yeah. to see it um, i want Dan to get the right mindset for it Dan asks if there's anything about yokai in my book. No, um, I almost put in Takashi Miike's Yo Great Yokai War, but it was yeah. outside. It came a little later. It didn't fall within my eight year range of time that I sort of wanted to cover. Um, but I do love that movie a lot. Yeah, I want to see the sequel that's out now. I haven't seen the sequel yet. And no. The original three y yokai movies are three of my oh, favorite Japanese movies. They're so great. Yeah. yeah. The second yeah. one especially is is amazing. It's so much fun. Yeah, yeah, I love those. Love those. Yes. There's an Arrow set of those. If you guys haven't, seen, if people haven't seen them in the chat, they're um, and they're also on the Arrow channel. They're like like a hundred monsters, uh, but like the weirdest monsters you've seen, like an umbrella and just like a leg. Yeah, yeah. I have like, a whole book about the actual Shinto list of monsters. Somebody wrote a book on it, and it's fabulous. Yeah. And like it's all like animus Shinto stuff, and like there's a tree monster and an umbrella, and the rocks come to life, and you know, it's fantastic stuff. It's just great. Um, and there's I he's got a little bow tie on for tonight. This is Gamera. <laughs> so there's a new Gamera cartoon coming to Netflix. I just saw the trailer for. I know. I was it's so excited crazy. about that because yeah. I, I love him. Yeah. <laughs> I, as a kid, I was a, the biggest Gamer fan ever. More than Godzilla. Even. Yeah. I don't know what's coming. <laughs> I forgot. What could that be? I forgot about this new outfit. Yeah. This was a, a rare Easter treat. And this is our first cocktail of the evening. So take it away, Robot Sam. <laughs> We're filming this on Good Friday. My ears have sprung. It's time to make a drink. This is the drink for Dracula's dog, a.k.a. Zoltan, Hound of Dracula. This is the Zoltan. It is named for the dog in the movie. I feel like this is a Halloween movie, not an Easter yeah. movie. <laughs> it's, it's dog movies. Dogs are well known, perhaps more than rabbits, for Easter. Did you ever get a chocolate dog for, uh, for Easter? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no just me? Just right. you. So. Four ingredients in this. Let's talk about our sponsors this week. This came from my mom. She made her own. She made Kahlua. her own Kahlua, so this is sponsored by my mom. We got Nikolai Vodka. We're still on the wrong side of the war. It's not Russian Easter. No. We got four ounces of the Greek value. Uh, this is from Walmart. From Walmart <laughs> Vitamin D if you want to sponsor us. And always Pepsi, zero sugar. So some interesting sponsors for this week. But anyway. You can use whatever kind of soda you want. Yeah, I use whatever you want. Just, we'll say cola. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're going to start with a whole ounce of Kahlua. This is from 2018. It might kill me. And we're going to do an ounce and it a half. It could be the cure for COVID. You never it know. Could, it could be. It was made before COVID. An ounce and a half of vodka. Here's where things get a little weird. Let's stir that. And you're like, well, wait. What if we added milk doesn't really seem to go with alcohol? Well, I mean, yeah, white russian kind of does. So let's try that. And this is a Transylvanian Russian, I guess, right? And then... It's Starbucks. It's Starbucks. I have a mobile order for Cubby. <laughs> and then we're going to do a little topper here. Let's do a little topper. You have been to Starbucks headquarters, so you know what you're doing. I do know what I'm doing. I also have a wife that has uh, Lifetime Stars Yeah. from, from there. So I, I'm a Starbucks power member. Look at that. That came out pretty cool. Um, this is the uh, the Zoltan. Let's just smell that. 
Mm. It gives off a 2018 vibe. Yeah, let's try the tannins in it. This is going to be, we'll roll it. We'll see how the legs are on this vintage. Mmm, Pazuzu. Enjoy the movie. Uh, I'm Sam from the other dimension. Goodbye. <laughs> Pazuzu to all of you, too. Oh, Pazuzu. Oh. Are you having one, though? Yes, I am. I have to add my topper. I was a little behind. I'm wow. slightly off brand because I don't drink vodka, but I got a brew dog. Oh, that's good. And I Seven got a really layer cool... cake brew dog. Yeah, it's, it's like a d dessert in a can. Oh, wow. That's and I've got good. a really cool skull glass. Oh, that's gonna... awesome. Ooh. Yeah. I think I have that same one. Yeah. Man. Exciting. I'm just having a Pepsi because I made that last night. That was my uh, Easter Good Friday <coughs> drinks, but I'll have a drink for the second. Day. So, tonight's ads, I have many. Awesome. So, I Whoa, promise this I won't take forever. But... Already. I love that font. Yeah. Yeah, this was the original release, which actually, this movie came to London and Europe before before it came to the United States. And this was the actual original title, Zoltan, Hound of Dracula, which happens to be the title that it seems to be most well-known for now. Yeah. My eyes went right to Susan Tyrell's name in the other movie, though, sorry. The Killer Inside Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Susan... that Zoltan font, though. It's like tearing apart. This was May 1977 when this movie made its theatrical debut. And this ad is actually, it's all over London from Sunday. That was a strange That's... thing that the British papers always did. It was all over London from Sunday. Yeah. That's the DVD cover for the British DVD. Here's a little promo press pick <laughs> of Zoltan. Is. Oh, he's a good boy. He is a good boy. <laughs> oh, <Here>. what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. This was pretty exciting. This was like a um this was in November of 77. So by now Zoltan was old hat. It was the second feature to the brand new thing in town, Suspiria. I'm also a movie with dog attack, so like it works. That's a good point. Look how they did it in Liverpool. They oh. did it all night, and they added the devils, and it's alive. Oh. <laughs> I can't imagine seeing the devils after Zoltan Honda Dracula. And, and no. Uh, it's amazing. Hello, this is Pete Burns from Dead or Alive, and I want to say I was at this screening, this very screening. <laughs> it was very important to me because it, it influenced the way that we dressed as a band, Suspiria, especially the character Olga. The mm. character Olga was very influential in the look that I eventually developed. And, you know, Zoltan, Hound of Dracula, the, who who cares about that one? Thank you. It's Pete Burns, Dead or Alive. So, uh, and this is from Canada. This is from <clears throat> Windsor, Canada. This was, it took uh, until 79 to get to Canada. But look what was with it. Hmm. Count Dracula and his vampire bride. Whoa. Which is, of course, Satanic Rites of Dracula. That's yeah. crazy. And how old was that at that point? Like seven years old? Pretty old. No, but it was in it, it, it was only in the in the UK. It never came out in the States until the late 70s. Oh. So it wasn't unusual. In Canada, it's kind of the, you know, the movies tended to sync up with the american release as opposed to the british one but this was uh it, it had the british title in this one mm. anyway this is from april 1979 so by this time zoltan had already played the united states under the title it's most familiar to me as dracula's dog mm. oh with horror high isn't that Another beautiful that is beautiful this was uh, March 1978 by the time the, the movie came to the States. It was like aging in the wine cellar, you know, mm. <laughs> the wine cellar of Europe. 
I wonder if they used the same prints and just changed the titles. Just spliced <laughs> on a new title. Mm. So anyway, uh, this is from New Jersey. Uh, also a theater called the Stanley. We had a Stanley here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, where sure All the good in the 70s. Drink, Sam. I love it. Okay, go ahead. There we go. Oh, look at look at the film they name dropped in this ad, The Last Survivor. Hmm. That Soul Survivor. Mm -mm. That's um, Sacrifice, aka ah. Deep River. Oh. Oh wow. The, the Last Survivor. Oh wait a minute. No, I'm getting that. I get those fucking cannibal movies mixed. Not Man up. from Deep River, the one from '72, but a different one. No, yeah, it's it's not that one. It's um, Mondo Cannibale. Okay, I don't I don't remember. Um, anyway, it's a it's another <laughs> movie where Mimi Lai got messed up in <laughs> the last. Survival. That could be any of the. Yeah, she she that that's her her role in those movies. I get these movies confused. I have to look that up all the time. I finally stopped having to look up what Blood Fiend was. Which was one of those like movies that was tacked on to a second and third. Is bill. that the German movie, Blood Fiend? Blood Fiend is a Christopher Lee film. Ah, and uh, it's there's a there's a female vampire at the end of it. Like it's like a mystery as to who the vampire is. The Blood mm -hmm. Fiend, that's the one that is. But anyway, um, here's another example of a Canadian run mm. of Zoltan Hound of Dracula with Count Dracula and his vampire bride and scalpel. Hmm. Wow. Scalpel with it. That's it. A... Um, this is interesting. That movie Night Creature running in the States is Out of the Darkness with Donald Pleasance, the one about the panther. Oh, yeah. So this was a double killer animal. Yeah. Night at the movies. You'd never know it from that ad campaign for Out of the Darkness, though. You don't know what the hell that's about. Almost looks like a werewolf. Okay, so mm. that was the run as uh, Zoltan, Hound of Dracula, and the very beginnings of the run in the States as Dracula's dog. And here I pulled out some more ads for us to look at. Oh, damn it. I'm going to fire the production crew of this show. I swear <laughs> to God, none of them are actually delivering the things they promise. Okay, here we go. Thanks to everybody who joined us tonight in the chat, by the way, it's really nice to see you guys here and thanks for liking and sharing the video. We certainly appreciate it. Make sure you go subscribe to us on YouTube groovy doom. That's the channel. Uh, you can watch it there instead of Facebook if you ever get tired of FB. So here's some more ads from America as Dracula's dog. Uh, I love the little homegrown taglines they put here. This dog wants to bite your neck. And Dracula's dog comes back from the dead. Man's best friend is a howling vampire. Oh, steak pulled from dog's heart along the bottom there too. I don't get that one. They were just letting you know what, what, what you could see in this film. Like, what is a movie called Dracula's Dog about? I was obsessed with Dracula when I was a little kid. Oh, like, yeah. Dracula was my first favorite monster. And that was all I wanted to see was Dracula movies. And I went to the library and checked out books to see what kind of move back when you had to do that kind of thing. You know, <laughs> you couldn't just go to, to IMDb and look up Dracula. So, uh, uh, and there weren't that many Dracula movies back then yeah. as there are today. It wasn't until like post 79 when the, uh, you know, they, they really seemed like Dracula started to come back. It was just, you know, rare to see a movie with Dracula in the title to me at that time. And here was this movie, this brand new movie that was coming out called Dracula's dog. Oh. And here's Sam. This one's for you. <laughs> can, can you see the ad Sam? Oh yeah, Crater Lake Monster, Dragon oh, Super Fifty One. Oh, 
I just went, I'm going to go past it tomorrow when I go home. I put this in there just for you. This is from 1978 as well. So this was I Dracula's dog's first run. Probably begged my parents to go see it. And they're like, in no way are we going to go see that. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. Speaking of Simon Ooh, King of the Witches, Jen. Here there he is. is. And Horror of the Zombies. All right, this is a good one. Yeah, I agree. I was just watching Horror of the Zombies the other day because I dug out this big stack of vhs tapes from the cellar and uh i know you shouldn't keep them in the cellar yeah but it was fine i watched horror of the zombies and i was horrified that it was a really severely edited print and there was almost none of the graphic violence in it it was all Aww. kind of mm -hmm. all. so i guess they didn't have the actual artwork a press kit for dracula's dog so no, they just uh, improvised here especially up against that humanoids from the deep poster which is yeah gorgeous and then it's like uh, and dracula's dog really ugly but what can you do here's a bunch of titles and this is oh. the spotlight 88 sam it, uh i will be close to that tomorrow too that was my favorite driving as a kid and holy shit maniac <laughs> I like that they asked the Beaver Valley to get ready for Dracula's dog too. <clears throat> yeah, this was they were just teasing it here, which is pretty this is interesting. And this is how people speak in my hometown. All N E W FO 90 for 81. Mike Justice laughs at the Beaver Valley. It's right next to Big Beaver, uh, which is the next town <laughs> over. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh go ahead and giggle it's funny yeah it's it's true i mean i grew up there it is the biggest of beavers <laughs> sam it's a double super 51 night oh. hey, More well, also, this is like your dream night bill with the brood playing there yeah anything with S samantha egger and especially um, oliver reed yeah yeah oh, of course samantha egger Mm. <laughs> it's, I'm all right. It's just that damn hand. That I don't want to see that hand. <laughs> These two boys keep bothering me about the hand, wanting me to revisit the hand. <laughs> Here's another great homegrown tagline from El Paso. Now you know why there weren't any mailmen in Transylvania. <laughs> I think the copywriters of the papers were like, you know what? I I'm good at I really... I'm kind of frustrated. Can I write some ads for this? And they're like, yeah, go for it. Well, this is interesting because you can actually see that the tombstone behind Dracula here says R.I.P. Zoltan, Hound of Dracula. Ah. Oh. <laughs> and how about the co-feature here, Blood of Dracula's Castle? Love that movie. <laughs> Do you really? I, I love it I because I saw it when I was a kid. And even as a kid, there's a line in that movie where the guy goes, don't worry, we won't hurt you. We just want your blood. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember thinking even as a kid that something isn't right with this. <laughs> and it just cracked me up. <laughs> oh. Wow. So, oh, yeah. This is pretty go. amazing, isn't it? Um, can you imagine? running these two films back to back <laughs> that's ballsy super ballsy i mean not nothing against dracula's dog i'm not like dissing on it because i actually think this is a really weird and interesting movie yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, something that you never ever thought would be the subject of a motion picture. And here it is, no. Dracula's dog. But horror of Dracula, like how how could you mm. compare the two? Wow. Whoa. That doesn't that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely would be there for this double feature. Hmm. Would you have back then, though? I always think about that. I'm like, would I have even paid any attention to these movies at the time if I had uh, the chance? I think Boogeyman would have scared me really bad as a kid. It's a pretty frightening. There's some frightening mm. ideas in Boogeyman. 
I agree. It's really creepy. Yeah. Especially the part at the beginning about the weird, the creepy boyfriend. Yeah. With the stocking <clears throat> over his head. Yeah, and it's like, you never want to think, I don't know, when you're young, you're like, I don't want to think about my mom and dad being divorced. You know what I mean? And it's just like strange. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, now you got to confront it. And your new mom's new boyfriend is living inside the mirror in your house. And he's mean. And he's super mean. He's really mean. Yeah. So this was obviously another one from 1980. Dracula's dog was making the rounds. Now it's with the children. Hmm. This is a bill. And wow, don't go in the house with the fifth floor. Is mind blowing. It's a great double feature. Hmm. There was some good shit at the Capri. Yeah. That was. We're gonna have to ask Joe Rude what's on now on the site of the former Capri. Yeah. I don't know the children. Just the idea of the the children gets me very excited because that was one of those movies when I was a kid that I saw the ads for on TV and I was just like, "What the hell could this movie be about?" I was like, "What kind of monster is it? Are they vampires? They can't be vampires because they show that little kid out in the sunlight when the <laughs> when he's stalking her in the graveyard." So I just like obsessed over this movie and nobody would take me to see it and um. I don't think anybody ever explained to me, like uh, some people that I met had claimed to see it, but you know how like back in the 70s and 80s when you didn't have the internet to go look at, a lot of kids heard about these movies from their older brothers and sisters and then tried to pretend that they saw the movies themselves. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I started grilling this kid about the children and he didn't know anything about it enough. So when I finally got to see the children, I was really excited. It did not disappoint. When I was young, the kids in my school were all like that about like Caligula, which maybe my school was a little weird. But uh, they were all like, you got to see this movie. It's gonna like, and like, you weren't allowed to rent that in fourth grade. Come on. How about the Kane Road drive-in, Sam? I saw uh, the Brady Bunch movie there. It's close to <laughs> another beaver turn. Beaver Valley Mall. Uh, also, they, if you're from Alquipa, you don't know how to spell Minotaur. It's not Monotar. Monotar. <laughs> it's the Monotalk Monotar from Monongahela. <laughs> the Monotar is just all one solid color. They said it like, uh, what's his name would say it in that movie? Like, it's the Monotar! My, uh... Brother Theodore. Yeah. <laughs> 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 when you come to this land, what you don't know will hurt you. Land of the Minotaur. <laughs> you may have mortgaged your life. So here's a nice little blurb about Dracula's dog that appeared in the newspaper. <laughs> I kid you not, that is the title of a movie, which EMI now has in final productions. The goodies deny <laughs> that they are now scripting Dracula's stick insect. Do you guys oh. know what the goodies is? No. It's a, it's it's a British a, thing, right? It's a British comedy series with a troupe, kind of like Monty Python. Um, I'll have to send you some of the clips because they're all from the north of England. So they have this northern accent. And they did, they did a sketch uh, called Kung Fu Capers. Um, which is really funny. And they did another sketch where they're making fun of all the old Shaw Brothers films. And they did another one called Kitten Kong, where it's just a hand holding a kitten on a little miniature set, like a background. <laughs> and they were pretty good, those guys. They they weren't as famous as Monty Python, but they're in that same kind of style. Oh, wow. Yeah, I never heard of them. Yeah, I'll have to send you some of the clips. This was an article about uh, the trainer, Miller. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's, I, I think that's Zoltan depicted there. Maybe I'm not sure. Might be, or or the German Shepherd. I'm not sure. Then well, that looks more like a shepherd, I guess. Yeah. And there's so many cute puppies in this movie. We can't overlook that. Okay, I guess that's it for the ads. <laughs> <laughs> 
So lots of excitement about Dracula's dog. Let us know in the chat if this is the first time that you're going to be watching this movie. And as we lead up into the film, I will post the link on Groovy Doom. But we said this one's on Vimeo. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. sorry about that. It's on UK YouTube, so I thought you guys could get it, but... Eh. Oh, we can get it on, <laughs> on Vimeo, so it's okay. Yeah. yeah. I may have... Uh be watching the DVD I have instead. Because Vimeo mm -hmm. doesn't play on... For some reason, Roku doesn't have a Vimeo channel anymore. So, mm. uh, yeah, so I'll be watching it like that. But I'm excited to see these dogs doing their thing. The first time I saw this film, the ending, the last shot of the movie, I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to give it away, but it is awesome. <laughs> It's just the cutest damn thing. It's just <laughs> as cute as evil dogs can be. And well, I yeah. have copy, so I completely understand. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think all evil dogs are cute, so you know. At even at his most horrifying or grossest, he's still cute. Oh yeah, he has an alter ego. Uh, Chicky is his alter ego. We call him because he uh, when he's angry, like he makes like chicken like noises. <laughs> <laughs> And he's very uh, upsetting to be around because he, you can't even come near him. Oh, here he comes now. <laughs> he's going to like Chicky. this movie. Also, if you have uh, Canopy, which is a, a library server, uh, this movie is free on Canopy, but uh, oh. but I don't have that. So I looked on Roku to see if it was free anywhere else for anybody. Yeah. To I'm this surprised like Tubi doesn't have this. How, does it, how is this not on Tubi? I know. Cubby, when that noise is terrifying, the cubby made like, <laughs> I woke up to it this morning. I took a nap. And, I breathe. I took Can't a nap next to him, and I woke up with him going, <laughs> oh, oh, right next to me. <laughs> oh. How old is Cubby? He is 11? Yeah. 11 oh, wow. years. He turned 11 in March. Vivi makes sounds like uh, Helena Marcos when she's <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> She goes, like, hey, Bill, hey. you want some? Uh, you want to talk to Helena Cubby? <laughs> maybe, uh, you maybe want to be. Oh, where's the girl? Where's the American? <laughs> what are you gonna do now, huh? What are you gonna do now, huh? You want some pizza, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna get on it? He is sniffling loud. What is going on? Cubby had a new taste treat this week. Uh, I didn't know this even existed. Roast beef in a can. Um, and that's what Ew. he had. Who knew it? And that was his talk for this week. He, you have to change his food every two or three days because otherwise he grows bored of food. And then when that happens, uh, he will not eat. He will eat your food. I'll be having a hot dog later that he will be very interested in. Cubby, well, do you have any thoughts about Dracula's dog before we go into it? I mean, as Dracula's dog, he, he does have some thoughts, yes. He said it's good, you know. He said it's more humans dying from dogs. I like it. He's like, I wish uh, I'm excited. He's more excited for the second one because he hates Richard Crenna. So he's excited to see Richard Crenna pay. So uh, he's, yep. he's excited about the second one. Yep. But you're a good boy, Cubby, even when you're not. <laughs> he ran away today for a little bit, not far. <gasps> but Becca was walking him and he shot off down the street. We had to go chase him. Oh. Uh, he only made it about 50 feet. But with those little legs, you know, that may as well be three or four. Like, look at these legs. They're like little chicken legs. They're like, that's all the bigger. <laughs> can't really get it. The back legs are chicken wings. They're drumsticks. They're drumsticks. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. Drumsticks, they're drumsticks. So when the world ends, we won't be able to eat cubby because one, he's gamey. He would not taste good at all. Also, there's like, there's no meat. Sorry, he's pushing me away now that he heard about me eating him. And, and yep, see, he just tried to bite me. And, uh, <laughs> and the middle is just all chub. It's just all, it would be all, but he smells very bad. We call him Ed Gamey, named after Pittsburgh's newest mayor. Um, instead of Gamey. Instead of Gamey, yeah. He, he's very Gamey. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's a, uh, but we love him. And Aww. he's a good boy. He's going to be dressed like the Easter Bunny tomorrow. Will he pee on his costume within 30 seconds like every year? Yeah. Do we ever learn? No, we don't. So. That's all right. Yeah. He's oh, like, I, I wanted you guys. Fertility right. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to tell you guys 
there are chocolate dogs here instead of chocolate bunnies. Really? Yeah, I'll send you the photos. They oh, and they have oh. breeds. They have specific breeds of the dogs in chocolate. Oh. Well, I guess it's no more gross than a chocolate bunny. Yeah. <laughs> It's not I'm real. Not no dog sure. was harmed making they chocolate. They also have dinosaurs. Dogs. They have chocolate dinosaurs, which I think is pretty cool, actually. <laughs> Sparrows, uh, which is a place around here, Bill, they uh, they have, you know, stuff in Giant Eagle and stuff, and they just had, like, a giant chocolate crucifix that had, like, jelly beans in it. And I was like, does that seem like the... I don't know. I don't really think you sh should give anybody a chocolate crucifix. Well... Imagine if you're a vampire and someone's like, you know, like chocolate, <laughs> chocolate, the chocolate crucifix is super deadly to Dracula's dog because one, it's a crucifix. Two dogs can't have chocolate. So, right? Yep. Look at maybe that's what they were made for. And like, we got to put them at least in the grocery store because vampiric dogs have been problems. Mm. I think there was probably a point in history where you would have been burned at the stake for making a chocolate representation of a crucifix oh, that yeah. people are intended Big to time. eat. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make a chocolate Muhammad, I can tell you that much. Yeah. No. It's just completely <laughs> accepted now. You know, like now somehow this is okay. Yeah. <laughs> like people that get pissed off when you spell Christmas with Xmas. Yeah. Like, and you try they're like, hey, you're taking the Christ out of Christmas, but you try and explain to them, no, that was how you had to spell it, or else you were the one that was being disrespectful if you, you spelled it Christmas. Keep the Christ in Christmas and keep the cru chocolate crucifix in in Easter. That's my advice. In Easter grass. There's our religious commentary for your Easter holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Does this have Kim Richards in it from the OG Halloween? I don't think so. Is no, she that's in that's the sis. Her sister is in the second feature. Yeah. There you go. Uh oh, Mike Justice, you are always getting in trouble with Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> He's this blamed is... me a couple times for this that I've led him down this path. I know he always blames us. He's like, it yeah. only happens in your chat. Like we made you do that. Yeah. Like I mentally said, Mike, you should say something about British people. I live here and I can tell you. Yeah, they're nuts. <laughs> Jen, Once you watch uh, the goodies, you're going to go, what the hell? Beaming to us across the pond in London. <laughs> Are you going to be here with us on the second segment? Yeah, I think I will because I'm wide awake now. <laughs> yes, at least do this. I know you can't do the third. But no, you can do the it's second. like seven in the morning. <laughs> Unless you took like a whole bunch of ecstasy or something. Maybe. No, I, I had a whole bunch of green tea and a coffee on top of it. So you guys have Easter, right? Becca just asked. We were on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as big a deal. Like the family dinner thing's not a thing here. Uh, but people, yeah, people do go to church and they have, you know, the, the, the basket thing is a little different here. Like I was looking and it doesn't seem to be quite as elaborate. Mm. So it's a little more low key. Yeah, Come on. Come say goodbye. Back. Come on. And, the, and there are no marshmallow show. peeps. Really? No. Mm. Oh, I got to tell you, uh, marshmallow peeps have are now available in so many flavors. There's even oh. for, like hot ones now. <sighs> Dr. Pepper <laughs> flavor, all kinds like sour ones. <laughs> like, Mike Justice, you must be stopped and you will yeah. be stopped. Well, Mike's, Mike's been at war with the, the blanket too. That, that was the other big thing. He was fighting the, the uh, blanket Bill made for the longest time. And now that that's over. Now, now that he out. has a blanket, everything's okay. Yeah. All right. So Dracula's dog. I posted the link on Groovy Doom. So I'm not even going to drop it in the chat because that seems to be impossible to lift. And I understand because, like, I go back and watch the reruns sometimes, like the posted video. It's impossible to find any comments because I like to, like, look at comments that mm. people have left. It's really hard. Yeah. I yeah. still, I couldn't tell you how to do it because I just have to feel my way through it. And 
it always ends up a total fuck over moment. Like there's no place you can go where you can just see all the comments at once. You're like, like, well, how do you want the comments? Like real time? Do you just want relevant comments or you know, just show me the whole fucking thing? They just won't do it. Mm-hmm. So it's really difficult. I apologize if it seems like I don't keep up with comments. That's why I just told you. I wasn't getting any last week when I was sitting in the darkness. So, mm-hmm. yeah, when oh I was off, off the grid last week. Oh, it was it was cursed, Jen Upton. You should. Uh, it's a good thing. I wish you would have been here. So it was just me and Sam. <laughs> I, had I watched it. I watch. I usually watch that Sunday morning when I wake up. And yeah, I was just like, oh my god! Like, <laughs> we didn't get an hour back to like the next day till mid next day. <sighs> wow. Did yeah. they say why? Just a storm? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was they really were diverting. Windy. There's a hospital up the street, so to ensure that the hospital uh, had power and stuff. All right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. So we will see you back here after the movie Dracula's mm-hmm. Dog, which is streaming free on Vimeo. I want to the second segment of the Drive-In Asylum double feature. We'll see you there.